Hey everyone, and welcome back to the Class 1A podcast. My name is Andrew Nimsgern, alongside James Graham and Dylan Beal to talk about one of our most anticipated episodes of the season and one of my favorite episodes of the season. I think I've said that back-to-back episodes now, but it's just getting better and better, and I cannot wait. Again, going to be a very weird episode. I'll let you guys talk in a second here. But again, it was just a really emotional, a lot of individual moments here. There's no recap. We don't really have big talking points. We're just going to talk about the episode because a lot of cool little things here. So we might be all over the place today, and we'd love to hear everyone's thoughts in the comments because we're all 100% going to miss something, but a lot of cool things. We're going to want to talk about all the cool things. So James, Dylan, how are you guys doing today? How are you feeling after the episode? How many tears were shed? I'm feeling emotional. I, yeah, I'd say I'd say this this episode definitely tugged on the heartstrings a little bit. A little salty about some things, but I won't. I'm gonna try not to let that overpower me. But that's 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 a hard task for me. So yeah, we'll, I think uh, we'll talk we'll about that goes. We'll talk about that here in a little bit too. Maybe we we'll say that towards the end after we talk about all the cool things. But before the chat, we're talking about uh, a couple of things that I think we are so hyped coming this episode. So we don't allude to it a ton, but we do read the manga. At least some of us are most of the way caught up. So we did kind of know that this was coming. This was an episode we've been looking forward to pretty much for the entire season. So what we're going to be saying, we're going to be doing our best to talk about what was on the screen, but we had expectations and emotions we experienced before, which is always going to skew that. So if we feel something one way and you guys watch it for the first time, experience the first time, and you're like, wow, this is a 10 out of 10 episode, totally valid because that's how we felt when we first read it. So going through it for a second time for us, it might be a little bit lower, but we all agree when this happened and experienced for the first time, it was a 10 out of 10 moment, right? Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I guess with that, where do what moments do we want to start on in there? I mean, fuck the timeline. Obviously, throughout the entire thing, Deku's <laughs> just being confronted by different peoples. What are a couple of Dylan your favorite moments throughout all this, or the super moves? Let's say. Okay, so I I, I got to say, are we going to talk about the big one, or should we save it to the end? Well, the uh, <laughs> mega combined one. N- no, Bakugo, yeah. like in general. Bakugo, we, obviously, yeah, yeah. yeah no, I tackle think, it I think first I, or I, save it. Yeah, I think we go right into it. I think. Let's go right I think into it. it. Yeah, because yeah. I, I think, I think that is what the scene really is. Like, I, I, I think the scene is kind of written poorly because it's written as all of Class One A. But like, this is really a Bakugo scene too. Like, yeah. it, he, he really steals the show here. He is like the, the front runner in, in connecting with Deku in this way, and he connects with them by essentially apologizing with him. And like, th- this is like the, the culmination, right, of like his entire storyline so far of him slowly coming out of his shell, him slowly being less, like, violent uh, and angry towards Deku and more of, like, a friend to him. Um, And this is the final output of him just being able to see it in front of him. And we see the flashes of them, like, at the different stages of their lives. Like, yeah, it's a cool... It's such a cool scene. It is... Yeah. I I, I think it, it, it definitely makes this part, like, worth it, I think, for that. I think to really hammer home like the like the like the kind of like you said like the cultivation of growth for Bakugo is that this is an episode that is like him stealing the show um but doing it in a way and not typical Bakugo fashion where it's usually or like I mean I guess traditional Bakugo is basically loud obnoxious stealing the show that way um and then we've slowly seen this shift into him um really like building up his other classmates and stuff like that in his own brand sort of thing and you really see it here with with Ida him recognizing that Bakugo is not the fastest he is not the one who's going to be able to like actually get a physical grip on Deku and uh he he knows that and he that's why he sends Ida up right so and I like even that moment there really starts like when you put it all I guess into like the grand scheme you're like holy shit like this character has like he is the most organic character in the show for sure yeah, and I think this whole thing started as a Bakugo moment. So obviously at the end of the last episode when we kind of saw him come in, me and James gushed about the voice acting from last one. It started so off good. as a Bakugo moment and it ended as a Bakugo moment. Not to discredit everything that Class 1A did, but pretty much the entirety of the Class 1A section was just to build up and get us emotional and ready for the Bakugo scene at the end, which is why I agree that ultimately this is a Bakugo moment with the entirety of Class 1A around, which I love for that. I'm good with that because I am so happy to see a lot of the other people in the class get a little bit of spotlight. They pretty much hit almost everyone, except for like Aoyama, um, Hagakure, which we don't really care about. Hiroshima even got a little bit of moment at the end there too. So I I, I really do love that. And something that we talked about before too is I'm happy to see Class 1A coming back in. Like I always love the war arc. I've loved the rogue arc and all that. But again, it goes back to My Hero Academia. So I'm happy to see that. 
and just getting emotional when Todoroki showed up. I mean, obviously Todoroki is one of my biggest characters here too. We'll talk about Bakuma more. Sure, I'm I'm just kind of switching up a little bit here, but Todoroki coming in there, showing all the emotion he has, seeing his fucking heaven piercing wall, such a cool ability and name and all that. Like, um, it just adds up there too because obviously that's a character that I relate to. So a lot of people that might not relate to Deku and Bakugo, they're gonna have their character get to say something, have a really cool moment too. So there's really something for everyone here. But it's still started and beginning with the best part, which is Bakugo. Yeah, it's like uh, this. Like, I mean, unless you're a Hagakure or Ayama fan, like you really did get. Even then, uh, you're, you're like, expected for you, that. Like, that's the best. They showed up on screen. You should be happy. They, up, they got screen time, exactly right. But I guess, and like, you try and think too, and you're like, how would Ayama try and stop Deku? I guess he would shoot him down, right? Like, how do you how do you do that, right? And Hagakure, she's just. I mean, I guess we have seen her use her, like, ability for some stuff, but, like... I mean, Ayama could spell, like, please come home and cheese or something. That, Put it all on the true. ground. I mean, that, that was very helpful home. last time. Yeah, that's true. No, that did that did help. Um, no, I think... Um, no, I think it's, it was just good to see, like, all the the minor class members even get even get screen time. Even, um... Oh, my God. I always forget his name. Like, Sugar Rush. Um... Sato, yeah, 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 like even even Sato having and like I actually like uh, like Sato's moment m might be one of the more like genuine ones because he tried to find such like a such a like a small thing. It wasn't like this big like life changing moment for him. Something like you know like the the school festivals or anything like that. It was just this very simple thing of like I'm not gonna let you use food coloring anymore to make candy apples for Harry and like that's like oh like, like you know that like that gets deep right like that's a very like that's a very like intimate detail about your guys's relationship right like mm -hmm. um so i think like even those minor characters really had it really had their moment right so i think that's i think that's great and i, I think that's like I, I don't know it it makes me feel like a real friend group friendship yes. right of like mm -hmm. yeah you're gonna have some of those like relationships of where like you did something together that like went really really deep and others you just have a really solid friendship and it's like the small things you know um it's different for everyone in the group and i think they captured that really really well here too uh the one thing that returned that is i actually don't know if it's a community meme or if it's just something that like we kind of joke about on the show here um but they have indeed brought back by Mineta for the anime yeah. the fall for you i was about to yeah. call that out too because remember in the manga wasn't it fall for you there as well too? Like, was that the official translation? And we all thought it was a really weird wording. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it was. It was just like, yeah, it was. It was just like, okay, all right. And like, you, I remember us all like taking note of it and be like, okay, cool. Let's see. Let's see if this like goes back into thing. And then yeah, we we get it back, right? So, um, yeah, it's like it's it's just it's weird to see how these what these moments kind of were. And like, you felt like some guys kind of got robbed, like um. Like, I don't know, like, I guess, like, maybe Mineta, maybe, I don't know, but, like, I think some of their, it was just these very small moments that, like, I, I like, maybe didn't do justice to the character, I guess, it really, it really built them out, like, it made, it made the, the character building feel very, like, artificial and unnecessary. Yeah, now, I agree, some what, of it was forced. Yeah, you know, I, let's I, go that's on the best point. way saying it is. Yeah, yeah and, and that's okay, though. I mean, I think, yeah, it was kind of a, like, from the class 1A strategy, it's like, okay, we're just going to throw as many at you as possible and hope a couple of them hits. They kind mm -hmm. of bring it down. So the strategy of it makes sense, but I do agree from, like, a reader that, like, would I have rathered Ochako and Ida had a couple more minutes or had a couple more moments? Like, probably their characters I care about a little bit more. Obviously, Bakugo, Prenny, Todoroki got plenty, like, even Tokiyami didn't get a ton there, which is a character we think of being a little bit closer. So mm -hmm. I agree. Some of it did feel forced, but from a strategy point, I, I don't mind it. And again, I'm just happy seeing screen time. I have no problem yeah. with yeah. with this approach with a couple things fearing forced because it still adds up. There wasn't any moment during this that just really took me out of it. Like, oh, yeah, no, that's just not there. This whole mo moment's ruined. Nope. From the beginning to the end, the emotions kept building for me, building for me, building for me, even knowing what was coming. The voice actors did a great job, and even with the translations as forced as they were sometimes, still did a good enough job to accomplish the goal, which is getting people emotional. And I was damn close to shedding a tear or two at the end through all of hmm. it because of every little moment, just like their strategy was coming into this. Yeah, I, I I do have a question like for you all. Like, what what happens now with the arcs of Deku and the rest of the class? 
Like, is is this really like the like the end of some of these relationships? Yeah. Uh, you think, or is this like what what do, what do you all think? I mean, we're I mean, the whole thing Deku's on right now. Obviously, we're feeling the timeline. We've seen in the anime the final arc begins. Like we we've seen all that. We know we're getting towards the end, and we know that a lot of these people aren't probably going to get more moments. There's a reason we barely remember Sugar Rush's real name. He is not going to get any more big moments throughout this. I agree. I don't think as a whole. I think this is kind of the turning point that no class one A is coming back in. It's reassuring us that they're probably be involved in whatever is going to be at the end. Rather, you thought that was going to be the case or not. I always believe they're going to come back, but I think that's more of what it's saying. Like, nope, class 1A will be back, but they're not going to change the dynamics of class 1A. People aren't going to become main characters overnight, which I'm good with that. I mean, I, I obviously they never kill kids in, in shonens or anything kind of like that. No one's going to die, but it just opens up that. It gives more opportunities for suspense, more people get injured, more all that kind of stuff in battles to kind of build in this battle, final fight that we know is coming very quickly. You hear that? He almost sounded disappointed that like no, nobody's gonna get killed oh. off. And this. <laughs> oh darn, the kids aren't. At least like I four guess. teachers to die. That means what? Izawa, Mike, and All Might dies. I mean, who who's above age that can die in this show right now? They can't kill off Endeavor until Dobby's dead, so that's fine. Maybe Hawks, but he already pretty much died. Like he can't even do anything anymore. So. Yeah, there's, there's, there's not many people that. you can kill off show, anymore. Yeah, it's the show's super big on maiming, but like not actually like finishing the job. Like, yeah, we'll just remove <laughs> limbs, uh, mortally wound you. Yeah, make your make your quirk like totally like not usable. Or, like, rip out all your feathers. Uh, yeah. Oh God. No, oh, yeah, but I, I I am happy overall, and I think the episode was done really well. I think all the voice acting was done well. I think mm-hmm. that's the biggest thing. I think a little bit of where we came in was talking about the gripes, but we'll kind of come back and talk about things too, but kind of coming in. I think all the emotional things were done well. I think some of the super moves, which is how we read them, didn't feel like super moves to me. Like, especially like the one that stood out to me was like heartbeat wall. Yeah. That, heartbeat that, wall that was, was something the- that had like a big, like two page thing or maybe a full page, something like that. It felt sick. This is going to be so cool. And then Deku just rushes away from it like in two seconds, like, it, like totally it, destroying it. Yeah, it like kind of like moved behind him a little bit. And I remember, I remember reading that and being like, "This is going to look insane! Like, this is going to look incredible." Um, my biggest gripe actually was heavy, heaven piercing ice wall, because um, I do remember like that. That was the super move I was the most excited for. I thought it was going to be insane, and you. <laughs> I felt so like I felt so bad being upset about this episode for this stuff because you see where all the animation went in for this episode and it is the retrieval of Deku right like in between Ida Bakugo and like everybody really like coming together for that moment but like oh god like heaven piercing ice wall was supposed to be just this massive fucking thing that does and then it just kind of looked like a stump when it was animated and I'm like man like fuck (laughs) Yeah, it just it didn't have that like oomph behind it. Like it, it was low detail. Like it did it didn't have any like feeling to it when it like came on screen. It just like popped up. Yeah, especially the, with uh, Todoroki, like, where we've seen him have those appearances. Especially thinking back to the tournament. I mean, yeah. that first animation of that, you could see the shading of every icicle coming out of all that. So seeing of how much love they put in Todoroki before, I do agree. Especially like, even in the background of like the Endeavor shot, um, where you can kind of see in the background, yeah. It did kind of just look like a one colored blue stump in the background um, and all that kind of stuff. Exactly, so. right? And I think, I, I, I think it was like a bit more jagged, I think, in the actual panel. Um, but like, yeah, it just, it just, it felt very uh, like lifeless. You know what I mean? I like, I know I'm saying that about ice, but like, you know, you, you, you really could like, like that, that massive wall. He's, he's thrown out catastrophic walls that have been so much more devastating and you, and you feel the power behind them. This, not so much. But if that's my biggest gripe from last episode and this episode, ideally kind of two of the, these episodes could have easily fallen flat from animation, from pacing, from yeah. um, voice acting, from anything. These are two very pivotal ones when you're reading it, when you're experiencing kind of at your own pace, you're allowed to build that emotion because it's the characters you're thinking of in his head. But when you put things like that on screen, sometimes it can hit really well and do better. Sometimes it can kind of fall flat. And I definitely think this hit almost as close as it was i think it's always hard because we've known it but i think for anime only watchers going through all that 
that's a gripe that they probably didn't notice because they didn't. I think they felt the same emotions we did two years ago whenever we first read this. So mm-hmm. I I agree with the gripes. Like for me, unfortunately, it's like an eight out of ten and like a nine out of ten episode when these chapters were a ten out of ten for me when reading them. But that's still really good for re-experiencing one of the most emotional moments in my hero for a second time and still feeling that. I'd say that's a pretty impressive job. The yeah, the big thing that really could have damned this episode and it didn't happen was the voice acting. Like the the like like like, if, like uh where we talked previously about last episode with Bakugo's voice actor really stepping up and not Todoroki's did it this episode, right? Like we yeah. don't you don't very you don't see Todoroki break that very stoic uh like visage often right and to see him actually put so much emotion into like his him trying to communicate and break through with deku i think that really locks in like a, like a quality episode especially one that's meant to be very like emotional and heartfelt and everything like that so yeah i would i think it still sticks at a nine out of ten because we don't get that when we read the manga right you do, like it's 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 all your own monologue like you're you know you're you you have an idea for what these characters sound like even when you do watch the dub like if you do go watch the dub like it doesn't it doesn't still line up so to read it and then to hear it are two completely different things and that's really i think a big thing that the the, the anime does a good job of making up for a lot of the time yeah, I'm super excited to watch the dub of this later, um, mm. just because to see how the voice acting stands up against um, the sub right now. Because like the voice acting is going next level with the season, so yeah. like I, I I know the dub crew is very very talented. I'm just really excited to hear what they're going to do with it too. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, because I like the the whole the whole main cast. I think is pretty. They, they knock it out of the park a lot of the time, right? And, like, I mean, they have big shoes, especially Bakugo's VA, such big shoes to fill. Like, that is a that is a hard act to follow, right? Like, mm-hmm. and who knows? Maybe um, they're just those episodes that, like, hey, you have to watch these and sub. Like, that kind of, when I was going through yeah, One Piece, maybe. like, I was told, like, um, I don't know, a couple hundred episodes in, like, there's a very emotional, very big arc. They're like, nope. Like, even if you weren't, watch the sub. And they're the first subbed episode to watch because it really does make a difference. And And that's okay. And some people won't do that, but if you're a really big My Hero fan, sometimes they're just episodes like, hey, these are just 10 times better with the sub. Get through it. If it's not your favorite thing, you'll enjoy it a lot more. So if that's the case, that's the case. But Mm. let's kind of move on to kind of the big move that we haven't touched on and kind of the final one. So Bakugo's final moments, we didn't dive into much here too, but leading up to that, we had the super move, which is incredibly sick. Literally, I think, what, eight, nine quarks coming in there. And I think this one was great. This is actually something I forgot about from this chapter that this is kind of how it came to be. So I think they did a great job of building it up. They really felt like the entire way it was going to be Bakugo and the reveal of Ida. I loved that because for me, even experiencing it again for the first time because I truly forgot about it, I think it was phenomenal. We complained last week that Ida has gotten no love in years. So him getting the moment, I think that really nailed home. I think you said Todoroki's voice actor did well, but... I think this moment with Ida is the best besides Bakugo, of course. Like, and oh, it's even yeah. damn close. Cause I think it's out of all the callbacks besides Bakugo, everything I say here besides, besides Bakugo is <laughs> besides Bakugo. And I mean, it has that direct correlation to Stain. It's re-quoting Deku in a moment that was very pivotal for Ida. It was animated beautifully. Like there wasn't a single part of that, what, two minute sequence that I wasn't in love with. Every single mm-hmm. voice acting, every word that came out, all of it was perfect from every character involved. So I think it's one of my favorite moments um, of the series seeing it animated. Like not even if it's the best and the most emotional. I just think the two minute scene from animation, takeoff and all that is peak my hero and something that I could see clips of being on Twitter. Like just a two minute really cool clip of something that happened. This feels mm-hmm. like one of those moments of my hero, which again, we've said it a couple times, but there's not a lot of those. So when there is one that's like a full two minute video that people that aren't my hero fans could watch is a really cool thing. Yeah, I I think the thing that really sold it for me is that Ida was like one of the original three of this show, right? Like he was like Deku's like second friend there. uh, And we thought we were going to be with him so much longer. um, You know, obviously he's kind of gotten put to the side in the show. um, But this is a really cool moment for that, I think. I was just kind of like recognizing like, they, they were like kind of like the original uh, like trio like part of the original trio and just seeing him have this really good moment. Like, I think that's what really sold it for me here too. Yeah. It's in, in, in like, like he didn't needed that. You know what I mean? Like, I think it, like it really does. Cause like this, mo- this, this whole sequence of events, I think would feel empty without it being 
Ida, you know what I mean? I think, like, yes, Bakugo would be good, Todoroki would be good, but, like, I, it, like, it's, yeah, Ida was there since the, since, like, the, the beginning, and, like, him and, him and Deku went through this, like, very traumatic series of events with, with, with Stain and everything like that, and a quick, and that quick little cut to, like, that very, like, the watercolor picture of, like, Stain, Ida, and Deku, like, that was, like, like, I wasn't expecting that, like, that was, uh, that was really, that was really, really good. And just like yeah, the whole the whole animation sequence of like his 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 like his costume slowly breaking apart, yep. his glasses like slowly disintegrating, right? Like it, it it did such a good job of showing how fast he was really going, right? So and it's just it's just it's just perfect for you know I I'm like man, it, part of me wonders like what this series would be like with more Ida, you know what I mean? Like because I think he is such a good character that I think kind of got like. Maybe not robbed of the the same kind of growth that Bakugo could have, but it's really like they like let him grow to a point, and that was it, right? Yeah. So, give me more Ingenium, man. Give me, give me, give me the, give me, give me more of the the favorite son. That would be great. Justice for and, our boy. Justice for <laughs> Justice for Ida. <laughs> and the other big three that didn't really get any love this episode was Ochako. There's a lot of voiceovers that she did. It definitely seems like next episode is going to be her big one. If you watch the preview at all, you know that. It seems like she's, it's literally called a young woman's dreams or something like, or aspiration or something. Declaration, that's what it is. So, as we know, it's getting that, but that was something that I did feel noticeable because they showed her on screen a lot between the last two episodes, but she didn't really do much this episode besides the one, like, zero grab touch. So, I'm excited to see where that goes because I feel like that also can have a really good Eda moment because it's someone that we haven't seen a lot. I hope she kind of gets that same love that Eda did in this one. It's probably going to be hard to match that same level. But it's a character that I've loved since the beginning, too. I mean, I think I love the original combo of three at the beginning. So I hope she can come in and have that same kind of emotional moment that we look back on. Like, nope, her character didn't become irrelevant after season three. Like, she had a really big moment here. She came back. Like, it's another memorable moment to kind of add to that. So that's the one last thing I want from this arc. I think we have two episodes left after this, 24 and 25. I hope by the end of the season, she gets one big moment. And then pretty much I'd be happy with what everyone in class 1A has got. I, I think yeah. the big thing with, with her, though, is we have to address the romance stuff at some point. Yes. Like we have to address that at yeah, some point. And so the we question, so the big question is, are we going to deal with all of that in the last two episodes? Is it the cliffhanger for the end? Or is this something that we're going to have to resolve later? Which, no, if it's... That's, yeah, if it's something we resolve later, then that means, like, this definitely isn't the end for a lot of the class. No, it's going to be a time jump. She's either going to die or it's going to be a time jump after everyone wins and they're going to be in love. That's literally all we're going to get here. Yeah, because like my hero does so many things well, but holy fuck do they do romance poorly or like, you know, it's like, it I mean, seems it's like, like what Shonen well, does romance great. You think like Naruto and Anato are the dream relationship? Does no one cares about Dragon Ball Z. Phenomenally does it so good. But no, it is because it, like it's the fact that it gets like bounced back and forth so many times, you know what I mean? Like it's always, it's just out there just enough to be like, Oh yeah, by the way, this still exists. And then you don't see it for 10 episodes or like, you know, or a whole season. And then you circle back to it and you like, like that feels, that feels like not, not normal. You know what I mean? Like you don't, I guess like in this environment where everybody's kind of like, you know, everyone's a hero, everyone's off doing their own thing. I guess some of these things do get shelved a lot of the time, but like, it, it like, a lot of times you only see it come out when really Toga is just like, hey, by, by the way, you caught feels for this dude, and I'm going to remind you about this. And that, But that's about it, right? Like, so but This is it's... the episode. The man she supposedly loves has been gone for months, is on the verge of getting away. If you want to have an emotional moment and try to take that to the next level, why not do it at the point where everyone's emotions are at the rawness throughout the entire series? We haven't... We have had emotional moments, but emotions haven't been this out and in the forefront ever in this series. And if you're not going to do it here, maybe they do it next episode. They're never going to do it. Like it, the by the end of next the episode, table. we will know if there's anything here. Do you think it's yes. gonna be like a declaration of love? Is do you think it's going to be next episode? I mean, I would, I would love it. I, I'm Bunny, Bunny Girls Empire is one of my favorite moments of when he's just on the field yelling, "I love you." Like I would be down for that. I could see her. Her kind of defending Deku, then at the end yelling that, like, I would be down for that so much. Even if they don't do anything else, at least just put it on the back burner. Because, like, saying, hey, and then they had a little moment, like, 
what was that? Blah, blah, blah. Like we'll deal with it after we take down all for one. I'd be happy with that. At least acknowledge it, but they will not. There's no way my hero does because they cannot, they will not, they do not. So it's disappointing. We'll find out next week. If I'm wrong, you guys can tell me something what I have to do, but I'm just so confident in how my hero handles this stuff that they won't do it badly. Um, anything else? I mean, with the Bakugo moment, I think the biggest question is, do you think their relationship changes after this? Obviously, I think this was a big moment for both of them. I think it's a bigger moment for Bakugo than Deku. Do we think that he kind of goes back to his brash self, but obviously kind of knowing that they're a little bit closer in the back end? Do we think we actually see them doing it? It's the first time Baku ever called Deku Zuku. Like how big of a change do we think this is for them? Or is it just kind of a big moment, but it goes back to the normal relationship? I, I think like on the surface, their relationship will never change at all. Um, but that's okay. Cause like the dynamic uh, changes when the underlying part changes, right? Cause like, I don't know James, He's, uh, he's going to look at me and go, I hate you, you know, and like, like, fuck you. But I'm going to come in here being James is a really good friend of multiple years. And he's going to say the same exact thing, but it means something completely different. And I think that's what this is here of like, at the beginning, it probably was like some really intense, like real bullying <laughs> that he yeah. was going through. Yes. Um, but now it's more of like, you know, it, you know, you, you better, you better not die or else I'll, I'll, I'll kill you kind of thing. Yeah. It, that, that's quickly what their, their friendship has become too. It's yeah. like, it, don't die. Cause I'll, I'll kill you, you know, or I'll, like, I'll haunt you or something. You know what I mean? Like it, it's very much one of those dynamics at this point. And I think, I think that's perfect for them. Honestly. Like, I think that's, that's, that's probably where it needs to go. Right. Yeah, no, I, I agree. And I, and I'm, I'm good with that. I think that's the best way to do it. I think a drastic change of their relationship would be weird. So I'm happy to continue it. I love it. It sets up so, so many good, funny moments. And I'm sure there'll be another emotional moment or two like this. And I'm good. I'm happy with that. Cause that's kind of how it's been before. We saw back one, like season three, after some of the training when they met at night and all might and Bakugo fully learned about all that. There's some really good emotional moments there. And then the relationship went back. So I'm good with that. It's the most fun dynamic um, and outcome of this, but I just wanted to ask if you guys thought anything else. Hmm. If this was like a uh, like late 90s, early 2000s show in an anime, there would be an episode and it'd be a filler episode of where Bakugo accidentally gets into a potion and he turns into like the handsome, sparkly Bakugo, but he's just really nice. Yeah, probably. I, yeah. <laughs> Thank God. That's not an <laughs> early 90s, 2000s one, though, because that does <laughs> not sound like what I want to watch. The one thing, the one thing, though, like on the like a closing point for this episode, the one thing I wanted to mention is that Kaminari is such a bro because he's like, brother, let's just let's just go take a bath, let's just go yeah. chill, like just like come on, man, like I think I like Kaminari just being that dude is just like, like that's really like it, again it goes back to showing like how diverse of like a, like this is a friend group, right? Like this, you have these varying levels of re relationships, and Kaminari is just that guy being like, let's just go relax, man, let's just go chill, right? Like. You, it's you good. need a bath. You smell. <laughs> you smell yeah. like shit, man. Let's Please go. Please take like. a bath. <laughs> yeah. well, I, mean, I wish you would have said something about how I smell. That would have been the best way to do it. Um, yeah. <laughs> but all right, let's move into Plus Ultra Awards. For those that do not know, Plus Ultra is the award we give away each and every week for a character idea, thought, whatever we want to name that went beyond that went Plus Ultra. James, who is your Plus Ultra oh. recipient of the week? A lot of good choices here. There is a lot of good choices. This is like, yeah, and it's a uh, like, we I, I think we've really talked about most of the candidates for this episode because like, it is a it is it is a Bakugo moment for sure. I'm not going to take away from that at all. But I don't fuck didn't take away from it. Yeah, I, 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 mm, man, it's really hard because I want to give it to him. I want to give it to Bakugo for doing like facilitating Ida to have his moment. But I want to say it's Ida. You know what I mean? Like, I want to say it's Ida. Like, Ida was the reason, or he was, like, the the beginning of the end to kind of rein Deku back in, right? Like, I really think where everybody was really cultivating and, like, building up to this point, Ida was, like, he was the straw that broke the camel's back on Deku to allow Bakugo to have his moment with him. So, even though that moment was facilitated by Bakugo, I'm still going to give it to Ida because if he mishandled it, it, it may have went to shit. So, Ida's getting it. Bakugo, real, real close second, though. Dylan? Uh, I think that it is Bakugo. And yeah, the reason why is that the Plus Ultra Award is about going beyond, passing the barriers that you used to have. 
And that's what Bakugo did here. He passed through the barrier of his emotions and he was able to speak from his heart and tell his best friend how he feels and apologize. And if this would have just been another, like, I don't know, a, a, it's not meaningful. This entire scene is not meaningful unless you have him there apologizing because otherwise it's like, cool, you had an awesome moment with Froppy. You, you have heart-to-hearts with her all the time. And that's like his thing is he has heart-to-hearts with people, but he doesn't have heart-to-hearts with, with, uh, with Bakugo like this. So I, 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 think, I think he deserves it for going beyond. Like, this is, this is normal Ida to me. Like, I expect Ida, like, if he's going to have a moment to, like, run really, really fast and, like, just be, like, a cool dude. He didn't do anything out of the ordinary here. But he's not a cool okay. dude. He is, he is not a cool dude. Like, and that's like, that is like such a big part of his character that he is like this really big stickler and that like, but like he. Yeah, was... but ne- but always like outside of like big moments, right? He he never like freezes up in the middle of like a big thing, right? It's it's not his character arc to like get better at that, you know? It's just like that. That's his like, that's his like comic shtick. That's like not in the serious moments. God damn it. Let Ida have a W, man. Just yeah. let him have a W. I, I, I'm not loving Dylan's last point there. James, it make you feel better. I, was going to pick, I didn't write the damn story. I was going to pick Ida if you both picked Bakugo. So it's very much 1A, 1B. I am going with Bakugo. Um, it really yeah. is interchangeable for me. I think they both had massive moments. And if you ask me again next week, it might swap. Or on another rewatch, it might swap. But I think... Yeah, the biggest breakthrough that anyone in their life can have is breaking through your own emotions. <laughs> I mean, that is going plus ultra. When you're able to understand <laughs> yes, your emotions sir. and talk about them out loud in front of people, there's, there's nothing much more plus ultra in anime or real life. That's a very hard thing to do for anyone to do. So I have to give them to that just because of that. But really, I do want to take away. I don't want to take away anything from Ida because, yes, he always goes fast. But a man built to go fast that's literally destroying himself from going so fast is literally pushing beyond your barriers. Of how fast you're going, so I wouldn't say do going fast is like his gimmick, and that's what he expects. Like, and he didn't just literally do broke himself. Like he did it. He did it. Like he went faster than he should because he used other people to help him go Salter. faster. Like beyond, he went like, beyond. He went beyond. Exactly. Man would have gone to space if Deku didn't stop. <laughs> exactly. So what you're saying but, is he he went beyond with everybody's help, but that's okay. Had someone else who went beyond. Another another amazing world. thing. Always use others lift you up. That's what the entire point of these two episodes were. You can't use that when the whole point of this is decorated people around them to boost him to go plus <laughs> ultra. So you can't do that on me. Yeah, bro. but do you know who let him have that moment? Pick a lane, no. Dylan. Pick a lane. No. Yeah, you gotta just be happy. Be happy for once, Dylan. <laughs> I have... Okay, listen. I, I was here since day one fighting in the trenches for my boy Bakugo. Now, 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 look at, now look at us. The most loved character of the series for like 18 he years now. He wasn't at first. He wasn't at first. Yeah, so okay? like the first eight episodes when he bullied and told Deku to kill himself. <laughs> yeah, yes. You can't just go tell people to kill themselves and be like, you do it all the time, James. I, I do, but <laughs> well, we're good friends now. We talked about this. Yeah, exactly. It, like, but like as soon as, as soon as we got past that, he was li- like, he literally obliterates everybody in the popularity polls, and he yeah. won't stop. He like, he can't stop. He won't stop. Yeah. Doesn't matter how far removed he gets in the series, the man's always ending up on top. He's the best. All right, that is going to be it for this week's episode of the Class One A Podcast. Thank you all for listening to this episode or watching, and for our rambling throughout the entire thing. It was a fun episode to talk about. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Share your thoughts, your favorite moments, all that. Which one do you think if it's either or Bakugo? Always curious to see what people are thinking. But thank you all for watching. We'll be back next week for the penultimate episode of season six already. It is coming so fast. We hope you guys enjoy it and we'll see you then.